morning and welcome welcome it's the you know what it is don't you it's the john lavinia success mastermind for this wednesday the 10th of february wait a minute it's the 10th of okay we got to take a minute it's the 10th of february already i'm i'm still getting over my new year's eve hangover what's going on here it's the 10th of February, and this is the Wednesday morning session. Let's do a little, um, let's do a little uh, housekeeping, first of all, shall we? You are here in the general session. It's 12 noon Eastern. Uh, immediately following this session, we'll be having our hospitality suite swing by and say hi. 2 p.m. Eastern time today, books for Britain with our good friend Mandy Anderson, and then tonight... Come on back, let's chat. 9 p.m. Eastern. It is networking magic. We're going to be talking about ways to build your contact list and increase your contact list, build your business, power of networking and all of that. We're going to have some fun tonight. Now, who's here? Nicola. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Kim and Julia, Evelyn and Sandy, who is running the GOAT operation for sure. How are you doing, Ingrid? Gail. I didn't recognize you. Oh, there you are. Hey, Richard, Carl, good morning. And Emma, I suppose I should say good afternoon or good evening to Emma and Jane and Suzanne. Hello, Daisy out in the middle of the woods. That's pretty gorgeous. Pick a pretty gorgeous landscape behind you there, Daisy. And uh, hey, it's our Books for Britain hostess with the mostest. It's Mandy Anderson. Nice to see you. Khaled, how are you doing, my friend? And and let us get going. I am... Um, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's Robin and Sandra. And of course, he who must not sleep, but must walk. Ibia is with us. Nice to see you. So here's a thought that's, that, that's been coming up for me. What's, is that, the, is that the, the proper term? This thought's been coming up for me the past 24 hours. Um, and, and, and we'll tie it to sort of today's theme yesterday yesterday afternoon i was exhausted i don't know why particularly but you, you know you ever have one of those days where you just you know and that's about how much energy you've got left yeah you've been there uh, and 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 Paula has this from time to time. She'll say, "Honey, I'm just wiped. I'm not really sure why." And I'll say, "Oh well, you know, I can't imagine. You've only had a, like a, a yet another 13-hour day and working in two and three time zones and doing the hardest work there is, which is thinking. And that's what Paula does a lot of on her job, thinking. And as we know from our from our good friend, the Godzilla of personal growth, John Lavenia, thinking is the hardest work there is, which is why so few people engage in it. So anyway, Paula has that. And yesterday was my day to be exhausted. What's the proper word? Anybody, anybody here uh, watch like fight sports, uh, mixed martial arts? The term they use is gassed. Yesterday, I was gassed. And I figured it out. Why in the world was I gassed? Well, it's because I've been busting my little narrow behind for about the past couple of weeks <laughs> since, yeah, since, since, since I've launched a sort of a major project in, in my business and looking for exponential growth now. So I'm doing a whole lot of things and, and spending more time talking work, and working with more people and expanding my reach, expanding my network and adding more and more and more names to my contact list and then actually contacting the people and setting up appointments, meeting with people on Zoom, meeting with people in person, sharing my offer, presenting some information, following up and then closing and working with the people, getting them on onboarding people and getting them started and going through uh, doing like hour and a half strategy sessions with each person. Well, maybe not an hour and a half, but an hour strategy sessions with each person and, and then working with them, helping them get started, helping them get their thing going and get gassed. Gassed. And then I remembered a 
a little piece of advice. Knackered, that's the word, Cyril. Knackered, thank you. Gassed, blown. I was done by about three o'clock yesterday afternoon. Here's the trick though. I had more stuff to do as the afternoon went along. As the, at that point, three o'clock, I was gassed. I was done. And I had three Zoom meetings yet to go. So what in the world do you do when you're gassed? See, and, and, and here's where we're getting to our topic of discussion for today. So what do you do? You're gassed. You're done. Well, your schedule ain't done. <laughs> your schedule is, you've got stuff still to do today, this week. And um, every time I think about this, and this was what was coming up for me, I, I think of a scene from a, scenes from a couple of movies. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I'm, I'm the movie guy. Oh, we shall see you soon, Emma. Please don't let the children die. <laughs> um, couple of scenes from a couple of movies. Don't know if any of these uh, will ring a bell with you. The first one I think of is, or one of those that I think of is Rocky IV. You remember when Sylvester Stallone, remember when he's fighting the Russian? Remember that one? Uh, he's out in the middle of Siberia, middle of the frozen wasteland, training, getting ready for that fight. And his trainer, during one of those training scenes, I think he's doing, he was doing these sorts of sit-ups or body ups that I had never seen before. Try to picture this. Laid flat out on your back on a bench, right? Now, normally you do a sit up and you know you raise your upper body up and down like so, all right? Or you might do leg raises. You flat on your back and you kind of flex at your hips and the legs come up or you know crunch or you crunch your knees up. You, you, you kind of picturing where I'm going with this? In this training session, Rocky is doing body ups. What's this mean? He's lying back on the bench grabs the ends, corners of the sides of the bench like this, and he raises his entire body up off the bench and nothing touching the bench but his shoulders. Right? Oh, whole body. Oh. And his trainer is standing over him. Watch, catch this now. His trainer is standing over him. Rocky, Rocky raises his whole body up, drops back down. As soon as he drops back down, Trainer punching him in the gut. Body up. Down. I can't even imagine. And you know what his trainer is saying to him? No, don't worry, ladies. This is going somewhere. It's all going to make sense. <laughs> you know what his trainer is saying to him during this whole thing? You remember this scene, Richard. Two words he's saying. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain, no pain, no pain, no pain. Needless to say, as you might have predicted, he won the fight because he was supremely trained and prepared. Another scene from another movie comes to my mind. This is another one. This is actually one of my all time favorites. It's a it's a Russell Crowe movie called Gladiator. Remember that one? The big scene and the big battle scene in the Colosseum. The slaves, the, the gladiators are there against the, uh, the, uh, the legionnaires of Scipio Africano. Right? And they come out and they somehow the slaves, the gladiators, come together, figure out strategy and tactics to defeat the, 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 the horde that's coming against them. But what I remember from that scene in this context is the fact that these guys were overrun. The slaves, the gladiators, they're overrun. At least two to one, three to one. Exhausted. 
despairing of their lives, and yet they figured out a way to come together, organize their tactics, and they won the battle. In the face of not only overwhelming odds, but their own complete exhaustion. Some of them had been wounded, injured, and yet they fought on and they won. Another one, another, another movie scene. Um, boy, I'll tell you, the first time I saw this one, uh, my allergies kicked in real bad, I'm telling you. The Lord of the Rings, the third film, remember it? Okay, if anyone hasn't seen this, please apologize. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I'm about to give away a scene. Right near the end, Frodo Baggins, who has been tasked with carrying the one ring to the place where it must be destroyed. He's traveling with his companion, Sam, Samwise Gamgee. They're up almost to the top of Mount Doom where they've got to go in and destroy the ring. Right? Almost to the top of the mountain. Frodo, who has endured enormous hardships and ordeals through this, all three films of the trilogy, he just collapses. He's through. He's gassed. He's exhausted. He can't even see straight anymore. Sam is trying to pick him up and encourage him. You know, come on, let's go. Can you? And then he tries to bring him back to some happy scenes and everything. And Frodo is so far gone, he can't even see his own hometown in his mind's eye anymore. Right? He says, the enemy is upon me. I can see him with my waking eyes. I'm going insane. And Sam says to him, they're both fried, exhausted, knackered. Cyril, knackered. They're destroyed. But Sam says to him, remember it? He says, well, then let us get it done. Let's be rid of it once and for all. Let's be rid of the ring. Let's complete the mission. I can't carry it, the ring. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Sam picks Frodo up on his shoulder, carries him in. They just, the ring is destroyed and peace returns to Middle Earth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What in the world was the point of all these movie scenes, Glenn? I don't even like Rocky, man. <laughs> Here's the point. Here's the point. Don't quit when you're tired. Quit when you're done. You may want to grab pen and paper, write that down. Print it out, put it up on your on the wall in your office or wherever you do your work. Say it again. Don't quit when you're tired. Quit when you're done. Anybody here got big goals, big dreams, something huge you want to accomplish? Anybody here got like something small you'd like to accomplish? Like to add a couple hundred, a couple hundred quid a month to your revenue, to your cash flow. Somebody like to make a real difference in somebody else's life. Somebody like to have an impact. Somebody like to be able to go to sleep at night knowing that you made one other person's life better. Sound good? I heard somebody say the other day, a lot of times people get, people get uh, almost discouraged talking about their dreams and their goals, their vision, because they look across the way here and they see somebody else. Oh, I want to make an impact. I want to change the world. I want to have a million people in my organization. Yes, I want to sell all of them. I want to make a dent in the universe. Yes, sir. I want to be the greatest, the best, the most important. Okay, that's their vision. What's yours? If your vision is to finally, 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 finally get to the point where you no longer have to worry about there being too much month at the end of the money, guess what? That is a massive vision for you. If your vision, if what you really want is to finally, finally, finally 
write the damn book, then that's a massive vision for you. And there's only one way I know of to go from where you are to where you want to be to go from to start from what you're doing now to what you mean to accomplish in your life. Only way I know is to change something, beginning with yourself. You know how they say, if you want to have something that you've never had before, you're going to need to become someone that you've never been before. And in this case, what we're talking about, that saying, the thing that I just dropped for you to write down, maybe it is time for you to become that person who laughs at fatigue, who ignores pain. And I'm not talking about, look, if you got a broken leg, go to the, go, go to the emergency room, okay? I'm talking about becoming that person who does not let fatigue stop them. Becoming the person who does not let adversity or setbacks or failures stop them. We, we talked about this last week, wasn't it? Wasn't it last week? Failure is not an obstacle in the path to success. Failure is the path to success. Remember we talked about that? The only way that happens is once is when we've made a decision that failure is the, ooh. Oh, I just remembered something. I just remembered something. I had a coaching session a mastermind coaching session Friday, this past Friday with one of my great mentors. And it's right here. He said that we can look at failure in one of three different perspectives. We can look at failure, first of all, as a wall. Adversity as a wall. Now, what are walls meant to do? They're meant to keep things and people out. Or they're meant to keep things and people in or they are meant to stop you one way or the other. There are people, and we know some, who use, who, who see adversity, who see failure as a wall, and they allow failure and challenge and adversity and fatigue to stop them. And they wonder why they end up living their whole lives in a some sort of mediocre, in some sort of fog of mediocrity. Never really accomplishing what they mean to accomplish what they desire in their life. Second way we can look at failure and challenge and fatigue is as a door. Ooh, that's nice. A door which opens up New opportunities, opens up new vistas, and we step through the door and, ah, everything looks different. Great. Now what? Yeah, you walk through the door. You step out of that fog of mediocrity. You step through. Hey, it's a new opportunity. Great. Now what? What do you do now? There's no real direction in a door, is there? All the door does is show you, it, you open a door and all it does is show you what's on the other side of it, right? The door doesn't really take you anywhere. It just opens up from where you were to where you are now. And then there are those people who look at setback and failure and adversity and fatigue, physical fatigue, mental fatigue, the emotional drain as a highway. Okay, now we're going somewhere. Highways are designed 
to take you someplace in the direction toward that thing, that state of living that you desire, that income that you're looking for, that size of an e-commerce business that you desire, that you are shooting for, that impact that you want to make. It's down the highway. It's along the journey. So let's tie these together and then I'm going to zip my lip and I want to hear from you. You're exhausted. You might be exhausted right now, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, wiped out. My man Cyril said knackered, blown, gassed, ready. I mean, seriously, ready to give up. Like, huh? well, what's the use? I've been trying so hard. I've been working so hard. Banjaxed. Nice. I've been, uh, how now? I mean, what's the point? I've been working so hard and I haven't seen any results. I'm not seeing results I want. What's the point? You know what? Yeah, I heard my old guys, the old place is hiring again. I heard that, you know, I can, I can sort of say, uh, listen, I'm okay. I'm okay where I am now. You know, I don't, I don't have to push so hard all the time. Don't quit when you're tired. Quit when you're done. And you ain't done yet. Why? Because that challenge, that failure, that adversity, that setback, that fatigue is the beginning of the highway. You've just come up the on-ramp. You're now onto the highway. How do I know this? Because this is the way the universe works. When you make a commitment, when you make a decision, a choice, what you want to do, what you mean to accomplish, the very first thing that will happen is life will get in the way. Guaranteed. Every time. And you will be beaten up. Man, why so negative, Glenn? Come on, man. We're supposed to be going from strength to strength. We're supposed to be excited, motivated, pumped up. Yeah, how much BS is that? <laughs> yes. Yes. With a superior state of mind, with a superior attitude, we can overcome everything. But as Zig Ziglar once said, motivation is kind of like bathing. Motivation doesn't last, right? Motivation doesn't last. Neither does bathing, which is why we do it every day. <laughs> so, you tired? Great. Means you're on your way. Means you're doing something. You're taking action. Don't quit yet. Don't quit yet. You ain't done. You just, just come up onto the highway in the direction of your dreams. So you're on the highway now. Time to stomp on the gas. Don't quit when you're tired. Quit when you're done. Woo. You know, I got energized just talking about that with you. This is great stuff. So there you go, and just in time, we see, nice to see so many other people jumping on like Jamie and Elmer and Evelyn Melendez. Edward, how are you, my friend? The Laughing Irishman is with us. And Ace, I am digging a nice relaxed position, brother. Yes, indeed. Therese, nice to see you. And of course, the man who don't ever get tired, the machine, the man, the machine, the Godzilla. Thanks for joining us, John. Nice to see you, brother. Now, listen. Well, I'm going to listen to Ingrid first. How are you, Ingrid? What's happening? Hi there. Um, just really short. Yeah. Um, being tired has nothing to do with anything. You just keep going, right? You just, yeah. You have to keep going. And I remember when I was... Uh, my son was, I don't know, four or five weeks old. I had a cesarean. I was single. He was colicky. It was shit. It was really difficult. My mother was with me helping for that week. And I remember passing her in the hallway and saying, 
oh my god i'm so tired and she looked at me and she said you don't have that option anymore and it that was it i kind of got that really clearly right there and then you don't have that option when you're uh, on a path wow that's it that's all i wanted to say that's fabulous you don't have that option anymore oh i'm so exhausted don't want to hear it it's kind of yeah, like no. <laughs> you know uh a couple things <laughs> like oh i'm so tired i've been working so hard somebody said yeah. to me one time matter of fact the very first my very first sponsor in my very first network marketing company used to say to me glenn remember one thing the moment you become a leader you forfeit forever your right to quit. You don't have that option anymore. People are looking at you. People are looking to you. Is that kind of what you're alluding to here, Ingrid? Kind of what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. We're leaders here. We don't get to quit anymore. You know why? Whatever corner of the earth you may find yourself right now, someone is watching you. It's interesting that you say that because I've actually become sort of a leader in the business that I'm doing besides violin. And yeah, it's really interesting because I have, I have to figure out the balance between actually doing my own business and <laughs> helping everyone else. And yeah, there seems to be totally even less time for any tired, but I'll <laughs> figure out the balance. You will. You will. I know you, and you've got plenty of help there. I can see. <laughs> oh yeah. She's a good tester. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. Mandy, how are you? Our books for Britain. Post with the most. Hello, Jen. Um, yes, this really reminds me of yesterday, but before that, I'll just say, I totally understand where Ingrid's coming from and can totally relate to that as a single mom myself as well. Mm -hmm. I remember those days when he had the colic and he, he, I was just like, I just want to go to bed. And you'd be there reading books while you're falling asleep <laughs> and making up all these words that aren't even in the book. So, yeah, I can totally relate to that, Ingrid. Yeah, you just have to keep going, don't you, as a single mum. But yesterday, something that should have taken me about 20 minutes ended up taking me the whole day. Nice. And I started... Yeah, I know. And I started it off and it was basically trying to print some labels with my thermal printer. And I've only done it once um, before Christmas, I think, when I sent some products in and I had to do it again. I forgot to make notes the first time of what I did. Really, you must have put them somewhere. But no, I didn't put them anywhere. Um, the procedures, the procedures. Yeah, yeah, because what happens is when you try to do it on Amazon, it actually prints it as if it's on a normal piece of A4 paper with this little label in the corner. And when you do it on a thermal printer, they continue as well. So you, you can't print it like that. Um, and then what it does is it then prints it out the wrong way round, and you have to get into um, different parts of page setups to set it all up. And so I went through the morning and then break, well, break, get some lunch and break and do it and then come on here. And it was just like, I know I've got to keep going with it. And then I had Adobe saying that it had, it couldn't change the page setup. So I went onto Google to find out why, whether it was my printer or whether it was that. And then it said to me that you had, to, and this was about half 11, I think at night, because um, I wanted to go into EVA's thing as well. It's like, no, I've just got to keep going with what I'm doing here. And it said, shut everything down and reboot the PC was one of the options. So I shut everything down, rebooted the PC. Went out, fed the cat, came back in, and my printer started making noises. And I looked at it, and it because it was the wrong size. And then as I as I did that, and it came back in, it was the right size. And it was like, oh my god, I think I've got it. Half past midnight, I finally managed to print off the labels. And I was I only had five and a half hours sleep the night before. I was so tired, but it was like I know if I don't keep going. I don't want to be doing this tomorrow morning because I've got into the thing. I'm, I know what I've checked, what I haven't checked. I've got to keep going. And so you're right. You do have to keep going through it. Otherwise, if you give up, you won't want to go back to it later. So it is just the thing of keep going. And you also said something else. You said life gets in the way. And I can't remember who said this. And it might have been Susan Jeffers, who's one of my all time greats. And she said, Life throws rocks in your way to check that you really want what you say you do. 
which is the same thing as what you're saying. So if you say, I want this, this, and this, and even it's just in your head, life will test you. Yes. It's what you really want or not. And sometimes they, at the beginning of all this, I've said that's life testing me. So watch out for the rocks and step over them and keep going, everybody, because you will get there. Great, great awesome. book. Yeah, thank you, man. Great book by Susan Jeffers, by the way. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Question yeah. for you, Mandy. Um, when you finally got that whole printing issue resolved at half past stupid o'clock in the morning, what emotions were you experienced right at that moment when it was like, oh, it's done. What did you feel? How did that feel to you? Yeah, it felt great. I went, yes, <laughs> I've done it. You should like high five in your right? notes. <laughs> I tried to find my patient notes to put them in the jar, but <laughs> it was like, no, I'm going to bed. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Excellent. See, that's, that's the feeling, that feeling of accomplishment, of uh, like of elation, joy. I get it. Have himself in the back, high five yourself now. Why would you, why in the world would you deprive yourself of that feeling of accomplishment? Don't quit when you're tired, quit when you're done. Sandy, Sandy, how are you? What's happening? Hi, good morning. <laughs> wow, you know, last night I was watching a, um, a YouTube from uh, David Goggins, and I know. He's Can't been hurt me. he's been mentioned here before, and oh my God, mm -hmm. the guy is so hardcore. I mean, so hardcore. It's it's insane. But he, what he's one thing that he said is once your body realizes you're not going to quit, it will adjust. And I put that into my own thought. Once my mind realizes I'm not going to quit, it will adjust to my goals. And that just like stuck with me from last night till this morning. He finished a hundred mile run on shin splints and fractures, stress fractures. I finished my first marathon with shin splints and fractures. I couldn't even remember the last six miles. And it just, it just makes me really realize like how determined a body and a mind can actually be and how determined I am like to not quit, to finish and hit the goals. I'm struggling with some of them right now, but it's okay, I'll get it. And he really concreted a lot of my thinking last night as I was watching that, that uh, YouTube video. And so it speaks to what you're saying today. Yeah, you might be tired, but get over it. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Thank you, Sandy. Boy, that's you. You are right. That David. That David Goggins is. You'll pardon me. He. This. That, that is one bad mofo right there. You got to read his book. You got to read his book. His book is called "Can't Hurt Me." Yes. Uh, I, I was. I was in pain just reading the damn. Thing. Well, oh. the thing is, the 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 thing about seals. My son is Special Forces Green Beret, so All right. I already Thanks know to him that. for his service. Th yes, thank you. I already know about three weeks in hell and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually, I was already watching one of uh, David's workout videos this morning. I row and I lift weights. Yep. And I was, I was watching and I was just getting so motivated. Mm -hmm. There you see, that's, that is where each of us is right now. And I'm so glad you brought that up, Sandy. That's another reason you can't quit team. <laughs> because somebody is looking at you just like Sandy's been looking at David Goggins. How many people would have been, would, would have considered just giving up on their dreams if they looked and heard that, oh yeah, David Goggins, he, he just quit. He retired. He's not really doing it anymore. <laughs> well, well, he ain't doing it, you know, man. Right? You can't. Once you become a leader, you forfeit forever your right to quit. Simple as that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. And let us hear from the laughing Irishman himself. Bill, how are you, sir? Ben, how are you, sir? Uh, brilliant. Uh, love all the uh, movie connotations, I have to say. As, as someone close to your age line, I uh, resonate quite a bit with Cool Hand Luke. 
Ooh, yeah. I and Paul Newman, the fight scene. If anybody knows that, where mm. Paul Newman just won't stay down. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. That that speaks volumes to me about somebody, and I appreciate it's a movie and it's a story and it's Hollywood, but it speaks volumes in that no matter what battering some people take, they refuse to go down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I can't I can't emphasize enough about that mentality. Certainly uh, from my last career, mm. um, there's been occasions when I've had three guys hanging off me, and I haven't went down. <laughs> <laughs> probably because i'm already close to the ground at five foot eight but hey it makes it difficult for these guys so it does when i'm still swinging yeah, um, really <laughs> here, right? but uh, i mean stamina is a whole i mean there's a whole raft of stamina i mean mandy has just said about it uh ingrid has just said about it uh, and elmer has mentioned it in the chat room I mean, you know, once uh, small people come along, you don't you don't get that excuse. I'm tired because that doesn't happen, and it doesn't happen in many things. It doesn't happen in any jobs. And what Sandy has said there is quite true. You can get your body will adjust. Now, don't get me wrong; it'll adjust for so long, and then it will say, "Right, guys, time out, bang." Mm-hmm. Uh, and I I can relate to one morning if you can picture. You mentioned the film Gladiators, but if you can picture uh, police officers being dressed in full rat gear with fireproof suits, uh, heavy duty flag jackets, helmets, rad shields, yabbity yabbity. Uh, we had been having three hours sleep maybe a night if we were lucky. Uh, and one five o'clock morning, we were all lined up like Roman centurions. And the next thing we heard crash. And one guy had fell asleep standing up just <laughs> straight, straight down. Thankfully, he had his shield and his helmet on, <laughs> so he was uh, he was okay. He was a bit shocked and a bit embarrassed, but hey, you know, that's when the body says, "No, no, no, now we need to rest." But to keep going, uh, you know, the simple thing there, as Mandy was saying, is, is brilliant. That whilst frustrating and annoying, and you want to throw the computer through the window or the printer through the window or go and get a, an axe and lash all around you. <laughs> you just got to keep going struggling. And, and it's, I mean, a simple thing today for me, being not that computer literate, let's just say, I've tried to do a little course on HTML writing, which is a complete, it might as well be Mandarin to me. Uh, and it took me about an hour to get past lesson one, which was all of four minutes because <laughs> I had to find bits and pieces that I didn't know where they appeared on the computer and go hunting all the way through it. And that, that, is, that is stamina in itself that you, you, you choose not to sort of give up on that aspect. And I think what I'll, I'll finish on, Glenn, is you were saying about the likes of highways, et cetera, and doors, mm. doors leading to somewhere. But I remember a boss saying to me one time about a guy that we work with and he said bill he says he's going to spend his life going through doors pushing those that say poo hmm. we don't want to be doing that if the door says poo we want to be ripping it off its hinges if it says push we just go straight on so we hmm. let's let's not go opposite and i really do like the way that you addressed everybody there glenn as team because that's what this has developed into is a team. And it is that little huddle in the middle of the field, or the football field, or the soccer field, where everybody gets together and the captain speaks and everybody goes, yes, let's go and do this. That's Thank you, good. Glenn. Brilliant. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. That's, boy, I, I'm just picturing, I'm just picturing you with two or three skulls hanging off you. <laughs> and, and nobody's, and nobody's got pleasant intentions at that point. <laughs> and you lived to tell the tale. But I'll tell you what, you hang in there like Mandy did, like you did, and like all of us. Hope, pray God we have at some point. You hung in there. You didn't quit. You got it done. If you haven't, try it sometime when you're tired, when you're just exhausted, can't go on, go on anyway, get it done, get it accomplished, the sense of accomplishment, it's done, it's published. And at that moment, if you don't feel like King Kong on cocaine, then you can quit. Amen. (laughs) 
there you go. Nicola, how are you, ma'am? I'm good. You? I'm jazzed. <laughs> good. Oh, this is a really good subject. I've been sitting kind of battling in my mind on which side of the fence I'm sitting on. So I can mm. certainly relate. My kind of previous career was 20 years in a corporate role, very high pressure, a lot of stress, very fast paced. And probably my self-awareness at the time wasn't as strong as it is now. So I kept up with that pace and probably caused me some challenges throughout that. But I'd done that and I achieved what I wanted to achieve there. I became a director there. And so there's part of me that absolutely does exactly as you've just, there's a goal, I set it and I'll do whatever it takes to get there. The, however, the argument I've been having with myself is when I left that position, I left it for, for that reason. And the reason was I wanted a better balance in my life and I wanted better self-awareness of where I was pushing myself too far. So I guess self-care is probably the word that's springing to mind. So I think I'm now more conscious of when I need to make those decisions and when the decision is the right one to push on and when physically and I do still have some kind of health problems I need to get over so um, this is probably quite personal when physically I know it's the wrong thing to do because if I carry on I will definitely burn out and I've been there quite a few times and when I when I do get in that position it takes quite a while to pull yourself out the other end so I think what I'm what's kind of coming up for me is there's a time when it, that's the right move to make and I'll know when that time is. And there's a time when actually the right decision is to pause and to take some time out, to clear your mind, to lie down and sleep if you need to, and then to come back to it with a clearer and a different perspective on it. And actually what sometimes I find is by doing that, you achieve what you wanted to do faster, quicker, because you've got, hmm. you know, you've got a bit more clarity. So, no, it's it's really good. Just um, kind of what it's telling me is I've probably been doing it unconsciously, but make those conscious decisions when the right thing is to keep pushing through. And when, if you can, to pause, take some time out and then come back to it. So I like it. Self-awareness. Mm. Self-awareness, the watchword. And um I, I think our I think our good friend uh, Father Lavinia has commented on this in the past. What he's kind of caught himself not taking that time to rest to refresh himself. Just go spend a little time with the family, rather than you know the machine. The machine never wants to shut down, right? Um, yes, I, I I do know that. It's an excellent, this is an excellent point you make, Nicola. And, 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 and I do know that for myself, in my particular case, I have not worked nearly hard enough in my life over the course of my life. I've not worked, uh, it, it's changed now. You ought to see my calendar now. <laughs> um, I'm making, I feel in my particular case, I feel like I'm making up for lost time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm probably doing the opposite. Oh my, lived, my life has been 20 years with about 10 mm -hmm. hour days, pretty much eight hours of them on a conference call. Mm -hmm. well, so I, I can do it, but now I, I choose not to, to that extent. So excellent. it's all about balance, isn't it? And what makes sense for you? Well, now, boy, what a, this has really been a, a very lively kind of conversation and the, and the chat's been pretty groovy too. Um, so at this point, um, let me go back and, and, and let us have a quick review of the housekeeping. So hang around if you like. Uh, the, the hospitality suite is coming up and Mandy will be with us at 2 p.m. Eastern time for books for Britain and then come on back tonight. We will probably have some sort of interesting topic. Uh, on the docket for uh, 
for networking magic and a word from the famous Ivia. How are you, Ms. Ivia? Hi, Glenn. Hi, everyone. Just a reminder about Friday with a slight amendment. Um, so after the general session on Friday, we're all going to be moving to the hospitality suite where we're going to be celebrating each other, celebrating ourselves. So think of the wins that you want to share with the group. And courtesy of Daisy Fabrigar, please wear a touch of pink or red because it is close to Valentine's Day. So we're going to be sharing the love on the JLSM platform. Yeah, so touch of pink, touch of red, Friendship Day, Valentine's Day, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to ramp up the love decibels, right, on Friday. Love and it. we're just going to love on each other. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Really? I have notified my wife, by the way, my, my, my lovely wife, Paula. I have notified her that uh, when it comes to uh, uh, pink uh, clothing for men, men's clothing in pink, she is more than free to buy plenty of pink clothing for her next husband. Glenn, it's a touch of pink. You don't have to come in a full-on pink shirt. Touch, uh, right? So you can go red, exactly. You can have an ear stud, whatever. Just a touch, right? So we're not going to try and make you wear all pink. Nah, nah, nah. No and, tutu for you, right? And you, you only wear the tutu at the weekends, remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were supposed to be giving away my secrets, man. That was supposed to be between you and me, bro. Oh. Good one, Bill. I think we need to see this tutu now. Oh, I'm never going to live this down, am I? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Thank you all so much. What is this? What is this? Susan? Only real men can wear pink. Yep, that's true. You know, I'm trying to be, I'm, I was trying to be subtle and diplomatic and I get called out, you know? Well, all right. That's then. what happens here. I guess we'll have to see what happens on Friday, huh? <laughs> Hey, listen, thank you all so much for joining us. We're so glad to see you. It has been the Wednesday session of the John Lavinia Success Mastermind. And once again, to I know the, the, the triple booked and doing 12 things at once, Mr. The Machine himself. John, thank you so much for everything. Thank you, brother. And we shall see you all right on down the road. Remember, don't quit when you're tired. Wait when you're done. Have a great one, folks. Bye Thanks for now. Glenn. Thank Bye. you.